Welcome everyone to my channel. It's May Larson here and I want to personally thank every one of you that purchased this junk journal kit that was released by my daughter. I'm super excited about this junk journal kit because I get to use some of the digital designs that I have created. As many of you guys already know, I have been going to school for the past year for my second degree in graphic designs. So I got to use some of the skills and techniques that we have learned in school and apply it to create a beautiful junk journal digital design. For those of you guys that got your packages, you should have already gotten it. Um, you should have a little package such as this with uh, all the embellishments. Of course, you can also use some of the things that you have in your personal stash, but we just threw these in so that you can create something lovely with it. You should have also gotten the digital files by now. Uh, to be able to print your covers of your signatures. What I strongly recommend is that you take some printer sheets and coffee dye them. The first thing that I will do, and I'll be doing a tutorial on this, is that I trim the paper to size, then I coffee dye it or tea dye it, then bake it in the oven, or you can do it in the sun. But the easiest way that I found was to cut it to size, then bake it, then um, put it together in our signatures. I also found that if you don't want to um, coffee dye it, that's perfectly okay. You can also take um, a coffee spray bottle, a bottle with some coffee, and just spray your pages, and you can take your iron and iron it on, and it gives you a beautiful effect as well, and that way you don't have to sit there and submerge it in the coffee or the tea and then bake it or sun dry it. It's a lot easier if you want to do it that way. I will probably show you both ways just so that you can get an idea of what they both look like, but it's very simple and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You will be needing approximately 25 printer copy pages that will be coffee dyed for this project. That was not included in your kit simply because not everyone wants coffee dyed paper. You can use regular cardstock, whatever you want to use. If you, if you want to use regular cardstock that's less than 65 pounds, that's perfectly okay. I have no problem. It is your, your junk journal and you can do um, the signature pages however you want. Okay, so we will be doing um, a video showing you how I coffee dye, and I will also use um, one where I'm going to do the splatters so you can get an idea of how you can create splatters and iron it on so that way you're not having to bake if you don't want to bake. Okay, so once you've gotten your digitals printed out, I suggest that you use something less than 65 pounds on um, cardstock. Hobby Lobby has a great deal every now and then, uh, at least every other week, they put their paper studio paper at 50% off, and you can get a sheet, um, 50 sheets for $2.50 with the 50% off. It's $4.99, so after the, the percentage is taken, it comes out to like the $2.50. So I strongly suggest that you use that. That's the one that I'm using. I know that everyone's printer settings are entirely different. And I'm gonna tell you how I printed it, and then I need you guys to carefully check your printer settings to make sure it functions the same way. It should, but just in case, to be on the safe side so you're not wasting ink nor paper. So the way I did it is you're gonna get five of these designs. You get a total of 19 printable files, right? And these are the main ones. These are the main cover ones right here, right? Then you got some that look like this. And I want to um, let you guys know I have a cold, but I wanted to get these videos done for you guys. Now these are the back side of them. And so you are going to first, if you want, whatever order you want, you select the one you want in the back of the signature cover that you want, put your paper in. If you want, make a little marking 
as to how it's going to go. If this arrow, if you put your paper in and you put your little arrow and it print it printed out and you your arrow was in the bottom when it printed out, all you have to do is flip it back up, put it into the paper um, tray and print whatever you want to go on the back of that. That way you'll have a front and a back like I have and it'll make a lot easier for you guys okay so you should have gotten all these now these came in as a zip file if you don't know how to open up your zip file for those of you that got your um, digital files and you don't know send me a message I'll be happy to send you the JPEG version of it it's just going to be two separate emails because the files are so big I can't do it all in one email so I have to literally send you um, two emails so that you can um, sorry, let me adjust the light here, so that you can get your your printables done. Now this little image here, um, because we're going to have a cover front cover, um, you can select which one you want in your front cover. So I gave you two options, and you can choose whichever you want. I'm going to show you one of the albums that this is based off of. Oops, sorry. And it is this here. This is the album that it's entirely based out of. And so, see what I mean about coffee dye paper? You can have beautiful tea stains on there. Okay? Alright. So you can select which one you want for your cover. These are ephemeras. You have some tabs if you want to put them on your signature pages and of course more little ephemeras and pockets or envelopes and, oh, that one's an extra I shouldn't have been here and then that one again more ephemeras there's a pocket some tags and you can cut these out and put them in your tags and you can print out as many as these as you want you can make as many journals as you please it's entirely up to you you know this this is your journal you create with it however you want. You want to sell it after you're done? That's okay with me. I have no problem with that. The only thing that I do ask is if you do, just let people know that you got the digital designs from me. And if they want to purchase the digitals, they can um, purchase them from me directly. Um, but other than that, you can do whatever you want. You know, if you want to make a hundred albums with these digitals, by all means, go for it. Okay. So here's another envelope, more tags, more ephemeras. Again, more, um, more tags, more ephemeras. Now I did a little bit something special here and that is since I am a born again Christian, I wanted to have some Bible verses to put into the kit and I'm excited about this because um, these are very meaningful to me and I hope that it inspires you. I hope that you can share these with others. If you don't want to use these, that's perfectly okay. It's entirely up to you. It's just an added little piece there. You don't have to use it. These are for the popsicle sticks. In your kit, you should have received some popsicle sticks. You have the large and the small and you should have had that in your kit. Um, again, they have Bible verses. If you don't want to use the Bible verses, just print out the ones that don't have, you know, the Bible verses. That's up to you again. Um, I do have some tags here with John 3.16. Again, if that's not something that you want, that's okay. You don't have to use that part, okay? Um, but I just kind of like that. And here's a little pocket. And another envelope and pocket and tags and a bingo card. Okay? So now I'm going to show you the other portions of the kit. Now you're going to have a little package with some vintage sheets and some other goodies and these of course, as I said in the video, you have some tags, you have some pockets. You can do these as however you want. If you have stamps, you can stamp right into them. You'll have a 
chipboard piece. This is for your spine, and this also goes with it. This piece here, you can keep it um, to create other junk journal, and these are for the signatures. So just make sure you save this because this is your template for any other future um, junk journals that you want to create. So you can laminate it, um, whatever works for you, just protect it so that you can use it for future projects. This here is a, some tickets. I have already put some little splatters of coffee, but you can do more coffee splatters on there if you want. You can use your distress inks, you can stamp onto them. Whatever you want, you can do. You'll have an envelope. Um, there's um, this little tab out of there. So I do apologize. I think we saw that this was like Hopefully my camera has recorded this part because I'm seeing that I'm having some glitches. There we go. It's kind of like acting up today. Okay. And then you have some graph paper and we'll show you how to create that. You'll have some craft, you have craft paper and graph paper. And then you'll have a cardstock. Now this is the cardstock that I got from Hobby Lobby and it's the exact same one that um, I used to print my signature cover pages. So, you know, get an idea of what the thickness should be. Use this one, okay? This one's a little bit thicker so it's going to be a lot more harder to manipulate, especially for your sewing and your pages. So go with something lightweight. This is a wax paper that I have coffee, coffee dyed. So you um, got a sheet of this so that you can make some beautiful envelope. I have a tutorial on how to do that. And I will make sure you guys get the links to so that. And a vintage music sheet. Okay. So that's that part of your kit. And I think, I think that'll do it for this part of the introduction of your junk journal. Now I'm going to pull out your fabric and I want you guys, in the meantime, I'm going to come back. I want you guys to pull out your chipboard, your template, and your two pieces of fabric that's in your main kit okay so i'll see you back Okay, so welcome back. So for this part of the tutorial, you're gonna pull out your fabric and you're gonna need a sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can obviously use some Fabri-Tac and that's perfectly okay. You do not have to sew this, this part of the tutorial. It's entirely up to you, but I think it gives it a very unique look. So let's get at it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna have this beautiful piece of fabric. It's very frayed. This is the inside portion. I truly like the inside, the raw side. I think it has a boho look to it. So if you want to use that side, that's up to you. If you don't, the other side is just as beautiful. Um, I like both, but I am going to go, just for the purpose of this video, I am going to go with the, the right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle. We're going to put these two pieces together. I just take a little pen and once you have your two pieces joined together, you're going to find that center point. I have a hard time here. Let me take my little bracelet off because it's banging on my glass. Find your center point and just make a little mark in the inside. It's gonna be sewn inside. You're gonna have some a piece of fabric on top. Just make a little mark. That's just an indication that that is the center point of your fabric. And so when we lay down our spine, you're gonna be able to put it 
um, right where it needs to go. So I already have my two markings inside. Now you're going to do the same thing for this one. Again, you're just going to fold it in half. And you're going to make a little marking and that's just a little indication for you that that is your center point. And so when you go to put your spine in, you know where your center point is, okay? All right, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're gonna make about a quarter inch seam on your sewing machine right around the edges. That will keep it from fraying further past the stitch. If you don't wanna do this, like I said, you can use some fabric tech It is the glue of choice for this project and it will work great. So fabric tech if you don't wanna sew, okay? Now, I am going to go sew around the edges and I'm gonna do the exact same thing here and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, next I want you to pull out your scoreboard and I have already stitched around the edges of my album. Now, keep in mind, I like the frayed look. If you don't like the frayed look, go ahead Clean up your edges if you want. This is just an optional thing for you. You can also put a beautiful piece of trim around it. And again, it's entirely up to you. I like the funkiness and that's what I'm going for. See these little pieces of thread? We do not cut those off because it gives it a uniqueness to your junk journal. So please, if you want to cut it, you can cut it but actually that just gives it more character. It just tells people that this was made with love and handmade and you can't beat that anywhere else. Okay, enough about that. Now, remember the little points, that, the little markings that we made. I want you to now take your chipboard. We know that our center point is one inch because this is a two inch let me bring the camera down. I can't zoom in any closer. Uh, we know that this is a two inch width, so your center point is one. So go ahead and take a marking, flip it around and mark it at one. And that tells you that that is your center point on your chipboard, that it's two by seven inches long, okay? Grab your template. I want you to take your template and I want you to score it at one. Again, it is a two inch template, two inch wide. Mark it right down that center at one. Okay, that is your guide for your pages. There we go, set that one aside. Now grab your fabric, lace it in. This is the inside fabric. This is 12 inches right here. My center point, I took the chipboard and I went by that line. I lined it up, brought it in, made a little line there and made another little line at the bottom. It came into my scoreboard. I know that my spine is two inches. Once we go inside, this is gonna sit right like so on our piece of fabric. So what you're gonna do is, if you lay that, the center point is actually six. Well, this is a 12 piece inch of fabric. So you're gonna go in, if you did not do that, go ahead and mark it on six, and mark it at five, and mark it at seven. So you're gonna make a marking at five, six, and seven. Flip your fabric around. Again, this is going um, facing down, so you're not gonna see these markings, okay? And if you are afraid that you're gonna see these markings and take one of those um, fabric pens that it um, becomes invisible after a little bit, use one of those. All right, here we go. Mark it at six. Mark it at five and mark it at seven, okay? That just tells you that is your center point right there, five, six, seven. So when I place this in, I'm gonna sandwich it right in there. Now here's another thing. I want you to take 
and place your chipboard right there. And I want you to line and make a line right down there. Do the same thing on the other side. And I want you to take a run. I did a zigzag stitch. I want you to do a straight stitch. That tells you right there that is exactly where your spine is going to go. And it should give you a little bit of wiggle room to be able. Okay, that's where your spine goes. I want you to do the same thing for the other fabric. This is your cover fabric because that was your inside fabric. So my center point, this is 12, um, about 12 and a half, I believe, is the fabric. <clears throat> so it is six and a quarter, mark it, right there. Flip it around, mark it at six and a quarter. Take your little chipboard. Now you know that this chipboard it's going to line at those two pieces. So your next marking is going to be at five and a quarter and at seven and a quarter. Okay, five and a quarter and seven and a quarter. And again, down here. And then you're going to make your little mark going to be harder on this fabric. You want, you can use Sharpie because that fabric has that, um, let me use Sharpie. I'm stitching, that's all right. I'm just going to, no one's going to see this because my other fabric is going to go right on top. I am going to stay away from that stitch because my other fabric is going to lay on top of that. So in the meantime, right on here, I'm going to make my stitch, okay, and don't go really deep with your sharpie so it doesn't bleed in the other side, so, okay, so you do not want to go really hard on this so it doesn't bleed. All right, so then that should be your center point, and if you put that in just like that, your, pa your pages should be perfectly lined up okay see what i mean now what i want you to do is go back to your sewing machine i want you to run a straight stitch from the top down to the bottom on both pieces top down to the bottom and we'll see you back okay so here are some of the things that you are going to be needing um, from this point forward okay so you're going to be needing this is in your kit this is a very thin twine that you can use for binding your signature pages. You got about four yards of it. Uh, you can use this or there's this wonderful little kit and I'll put the link below that I purchased from Amazon and it comes with some wax thread and it also has some needles and all. It has a nice little ruler, some scissors, a bone folder, and some uh, a pencil and some other little goodies as well. So this makes, and this has a little exacto knife as well. So it, it has everything you need in here to do your book bindings. And I think this is less than $20 and I'll put the link below if you're interested. If not, I'm gonna show you what you can grab from your personal stash. Okay, so, so this comes in this kit. And you're welcome to use that if you want, or you can go through your stuff. So let's see what you have in your personal stash. All right, I suggest that you go to Dollar Tree and you pick up some book binding clips. There's a pack of eight for a dollar. You're definitely going to need uh, about two packs at least. It helps keep your pages together. Um, makes life a lot easier. Um, I try to keep enough of these here just so that I can put things down. So you're gonna need that. You're gonna need Fabri-Tac, 
I have done a video that shows that this is actually pretty good for paper binding. And so we're going to stick with that. It also, because we have fabric, this is going to be the glue of choice aside from your hot glue. And we all have that in our um, craft possession. You need scissors, your template, of course, and some type of exacto knife. We all have that. If you don't get that kit, you have to have an exacto knife of any sort. Um, not it, the exacto knife part of it is not very necessary uh, unless you're going to be cutting something. We don't know yet, but in the in the event that you do need, have an exacto knife or an. Uh, distressing tool. If you don't have any of these, use the back of a pair of scissors. You can distress your papers with your scissors as well. I tend to use that often because I forget that I have these, okay? Not that I forget, I just don't want to pull them out. Most of you guys have eyelets. This did not come with an eyelet in your kit because I assume that everyone has an eyelet. In the original one that I made a video for, I put an eyelet in. So that's an optional thing. I will probably do one because I'm also going to show you guys how to do a bohemian, which a bohemian junk bead, which um, that's in a little additional tutorial that I'm going to do for you guys. If you don't have an awe, Tim Holtz piercing tool or any piercing tool for that matter, whatever piercing tool you have. And if you don't have a piercing tool, grab a needle. You know, we all have needles. Grab a needle and pierce it. You'll have to have some type of uh, self-healing mat. And if you don't have one, use your phone book. Old phone books work just as great or an old book to be able to pierce down on your pages. Okay? So those are out of the way. And distressing tools. I like these brushes. It makes life a lot easier. My sponges don't break. I don't have to constantly replace it. So I'm using these. I'm also using Tim Holtz Vintage Photos. You can use whatever ink you want. That's entirely up to you and your personal preference as well. So those are another one. Okay. Your crocodile hole puncher, whatever hole puncher you have or whatever you have to set your eyelet if you're gonna set an eyelet. So again, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but you are gonna need this, some type of punching device because you're going to need to punch your um, signature pages onto your template. If you have an L ruler, a dollar at Dollar Tree that helps a little bit with um, getting things aligned perfectly well, if you don't have this, just use any real ruler. Tim Holtz ruler helps you align things a lot better. But for a dollar, you know, you can't beat. You're trying to place, um, say, you have... Um, this here and you want to place an image and you want to make sure it's perfectly let me see what I find perfectly straight oh, Hobby Lobby Bill you can just use that and it helps align things a little bit better okay that's again that's entirely up to you but for a dollar it's metal you can't go wrong with it okay and your scoreboard you're gonna need your scoreboard because you're gonna have to score um, your signature pages. Now for your coffee dye pages, I don't recommend you score them unless you're using some type of a card stock that's less than 65 pound weight just because once you uh, take your printer paper and you coffee dye it becomes a little bit tender and brittle and you don't want to break those. I suggest folding them and we'll show you that in the tutorial. Okay, so move that along. All right, so grab your binder clips, if you have any, if not a paper clip, and bind your, your template, just like so. Laminate these so that you can have them for future reference. And Brianna's walked in, okay. So go ahead and line those in really well and make a marking so that you know this is where you're going to be punching your holes. Go 
really need to bring that camera down. I'm going to do that in the next video. Try to bring the camera just to level down. You may need to bring the shelf a level down. I think that's really what I'm going to do. Okay, so talking to myself, guys. Get your template, get them marked, and then take your handy dandy little. You're going to go with the smaller, um, which is the 1 8 inch diameter. Just go in there and start punching. Line them up perfectly well and punch away. Okay, so just do this for all of it and we'll be back. So you pierce your holes and now what we're going to do is if you want an eyelet in the center, just like I've done on this one here, what I'm going to suggest you do is grab your template, place it back in on top of your chipboard, align it perfectly well, attach a binder clip at the end and take your little L shape ruler and let's go in about, and I'm using also this guy from this glass mat. So I'm going to go in about a half inch and about a half inch. Okay. And then go ahead and make your marking with your copper dial. Now, the hole for your eyelet will depend on uh, how big your eyelet is going to be. So I'm going to use the 3 16th inch, I think it is, or the 8 16th, yeah, 3 16th. So that's what I'm using on mine because I know that my eyelets are fairly big. Right in the middle, just like that. Okay? And then that way... Jeez. Noise, not mass. That way that'll slide right in there, see? So for this one here, I got these at Hobby Lobby, the We Are Memory Keeper eyelets. So I used a 316 and it fit just perfectly well right in there, in there. Okay? Can't put that in yet though, so we'll set that aside. Okay. That's that. Move my ruler. Now, cutting your your um, so this this is gonna go in just like that. You have to decide which one's your top and which one's your bottom. So that's gonna go in just snug and right in there. Okay, right in there is where that's going to go. Okay? Now, we want to cut our paper, so I'm going to put that aside for now. Save your template. You're going to need this, okay? So set that aside as well. Set your, your twine aside. Now grab your paper. Now, as I said before, depending on how your printer prints, is how you were going to do the back and you select which one you want to print so I just went in and I selected this one and I decided I wanted the flowers for her and that's what I did for all of mine. I just selected which one was going to go with which paper okay and now I know that these with the pretty pictures those are my cover outside pages for the signature. So this is actually the inside page, and this is the cover page. So you're going to see the difference between the inside pages and the cover pages, okay? So just so you know that. But again, you can do it however you want. Now, this is where you're going to need your paper clipper or your paper trimmer. Sorry, not paper clipper. Um, your paper trimmer. You can use an X-Acto knife if you don't have a paper trimmer. Use your ruler and 
for that, you can use one of these um, T rulers. Line it up to the edge. Take your T ruler, and you can purchase these at Amazon or Hobby Lobby does have the metal ones. This was very affordable. I think I paid like four bucks for two, or something for two. It is, it is a little flimsy, but it's great for aligning as well. Or you can use your l shape ruler as well and just line it up. Since it is metal, line it up and trim. You're going to need your X-Acto knife if you're going to do that and a good uh, cutting mat. They say that these glass mats are great for cutting. I don't want to try it and I also don't want to wear out my blades. So I prefer if you use a self-healing mat because that way you're not replacing your blades all the time. I don't want to try to test the glass mat as much as they say they are meant for that. I don't want to test it. So again, it's entirely up to you. So here's how you could use your L-shaped ruler from Dollar Tree. You can just take it, align it right up to the frame or the border, sorry. Just line it right up. See how easy that is? I've got the top and the sides. And all I have to do is take my X-Acto knife. If I'm on a mat, just as I got this one, I've had this one since 2000. 13 from close to my heart um, I'll show you this one I like this I'll show you how to do it this way and I'll show you the paper form way so I'm just going to go right in line it with this little L-shaped ruler just like so and I don't normally have a steady hand if you don't have a steady hand then don't do it this way if you have a paper trimmer do it with the paper trimmer if not use your scissors there is a border and it makes it easy for you to cut. All right, so just grab it, align it, and then just, and I have my hand on the way, and just trim it. So you can do it that way. And the, the ruler makes it so much easier. I miss this spot. To align those, okay? So you can do it that way, or you can run these through your paper cutter and trim them out. So we'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and trim all these out, and I'll meet you back. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part of a discussion about printing. I sent you guys an email with what should have been the right size for this kit. However, as I was doing that and I sent that, Adobe had made some um, adjustments from the time I had saved the file to the time that I um, sent it out to you yesterday. And I had not realized that from the time I saved it to the time I sent it yesterday, um, yesterday, Tuesday, that there were some changes and updates that affected. Well, when I sat down to do my video, this is probably like take number 50 and very frustrated number 50. I felt like um, a movie producer, you know, when they're saying um, cut, you know, or do it again or whatever it is that they say, take five, take 100. I felt like that because every time I thought, okay, I printed it, it did well, I turn around and it was not what it was supposed to print. So I had to call Adobe uh, Wednesday morning. I was on the phone with two represent, actually three because a supervisor was one, two guys in my computer, which were recorded because um, they had messed up my program, my files. And I had to redo them, so I spent a good portion of yesterday evening redoing what they damaged. The update is that Adobe is not very user-friendly. And basically what they're saying is if you're using an Adobe product, you should be printing off directly from Adobe. So these you're going to be getting, again, as PDF. Print these as PDF. I... Um, 
can't send it to you guys JPEG. I will send it to you JPEG and it all depends on your printer and your programs that you might have at home. But apparently not all programs are Adobe friendly and not all printers are Adobe friendly either. My printer was having such a hay fit, a heyday. I mean it was just literally if I could show you how many takes it took. Look at this. That is all the printing of all the stuff I had to print because it was just not adding up, not lining up like it was supposed to and like it, how it was designed. So here's the dealio. You're going to print it, your cover pages, and you have five cover pages. These are your cover pages, guys. That's your cover page. That's your cover page. That's your cover page. It's backwards, but it's that's your cover page, and that's your cover page. Those five are your cover pages. Now, I know Michelle Pipeline wanted a back page. That's where the dilemma came in. Originally, when I designed and I printed it out the first time and there was no updates with Adobe, it printed out perfectly aligned well. How I know? Because I printed it out and, of course, I um, gave those printouts to Miss Judy. But Miss Judy don't use those because the sizes are a little bit big. Anyway... We've had to go back in and redesign them because Adobe, while they were in my computer, the guy, one of the guys that was in there, he was cropping and he just kind of dorked up my files. So we had to do it all over again. So here's a new design. So you're going to be printing these five and then you're going to make sure that when you're inserting your paper in, pay attention how it's coming down from your feeder. If you see it's coming down this way, Pay attention so you can flip it that way. Um, I, I also found that if I printed from uh, PDF, it printed with Sears this way, it printed the image this way. If I did it um, from JPEG, it printed with this image going this way. So pay attention how it's coming out. And then uh, so that way you know how to reinsert your back page. But I try to make the back page. I eliminated some stuff so that they're full pages. So this is a new page. I think this it turned out beautiful. And this is another full page. It's beautiful. And we kept this one because um, I was able to change it a little. And then we kept that one. And then we added this one because he... So this is the difference in programs. Which one printed? I think this was the way Adobe printed it, uh, PDF. And then this is coming out of JPEG. So I like the fact that the JPEG print out the whole thing. It should have been like this because the way I design it and it's sitting in my back, this is flush to the center. So it's all evened out and you have, it looks like this. This is what it looks like from the JPEG. But you see how different selections of printers makes it different. See that? So this is JPEG. This is printing directly from Photoshop. So Photoshop gives me the little borders that I asked it to have, whereas JPEG Microsoft does not. Okay. So you guys play around and as long as basically as long as you have your cover page, which is to fit and it is nine and three quarters, nine and three quarters by seven inches. Keep that in mind, nine and three quarters by seven inches, okay? That is what your cover should be. Once you have those, as long as you have that, everything is perfectly okay. This back here, if you don't want to print, if you don't want to go through the headache that I had to go through, ideally I wasn't going to do a cover page because I know that cover pages or the inside page can be Sorry, I wasn't going to do an inside page because that could be a little tricky to print in the back. But we went ahead and did it. Um, so it's here. You guys can just print it out and, and get a nice little cover page in the back. Just know you're going to have a border, okay? Just, just know that. All right. Getting that off my back. This was a headache, guys. A headache. Oh my God. I think I went through 150 sheets of cardstock and 
I don't know how many I had this much stack of printer paper and I'm down to this much because we were just printing and the good thing is I have an Epson printer and and that's the other thing always make sure you flush it because my printer if I'm not assisting it because this is thick it prints <coughs> perfect on printer paper no problem this is this is directly from the printer paper it did a great job but because it's thicker and this is 65 pound weight or less you know it kinda doesn't like it the, that feeding mechanism it, it has to think about okay I'm pulling in something a little bit thicker and it doesn't really like it it's not meant for thick paper so it was a little it was a little challenging <coughs> Okay, so we got our papers. I'm trimming them just with the scissors. Um, so I just go like this, right? Follow the lines and score it right in a half. And it just makes it a lot quicker than me pulling out a paper trimmer and trimming it that way. If you want perfect lines? Go for it. Go for the paper trimmer. Um, To be honest, I'll be distressing the edges anyway, so it really doesn't matter uh, because my edges are going to be distressed, and so I'm not too concerned. Although I am, I think I'm doing pretty good as far as cutting straight lines. I don't know. <laughs> and guys, I do have a cold, and it. You guys should hear my other videos. It's probably a good thing. So see these, you can. <coughs> Excuse me. You guys can clip these and use them for scraps when you're decoupaging or doing like a collage. I have a desk or a box underneath my desk. And of course, you guys saw that stack of stuff. I'll use those for scraps to decoupage and build on. So those won't get tossed. So we'll just cut these along here. <coughs> Sorry. We're going to cut all these. I want to get off camera because I need to cough a little. I'll be back. Welcome back. So I had a little bit of a coughing session there and um, trying to make the videos a little short because as I talk more, I can feel it in my throat. Anyway, I have them folded and scored. I just folded them in the center, used my bowl folder, and burnished them in. Now, this is the point where you can take your scissors, run it around the edges, and distress the edges. Take your Tim Holtz ink, or any distress ink that you want to use, and distress your edges. If you want to sew this, I highly suggest it because it gives it a really nice, uh, unique look. Do it with your um, cover page facing up. Okay, do the stitches on your cover page. And basically the way I do it, I always use a contrasting color, like maybe black or brown, something that's going to pop. You can probably look at some of these colors here and maybe choose a color that you want entirely up to you. You can also hand stitch with some embroidery floss. You can stitch some little things here, and we might do that. We might do a couple little stitches here and there with embroidery floss. So we'll probably do some like that. Um, in decorative pieces maybe in the inside not so much in the outside but maybe in the inside we'll see as we go along okay so you're gonna stitch I do random stitches zigzag straight um, running stitch and then I do some little crooked ziggly like someone didn't know how to sew which I really don't know how to sew but um, <coughs> you know I do some random stitches all around the edges once you have that you can set those aside and you can grab all your little embellishments that are in your kit and you can start cutting them out. And I've already started doing that. Like I said, these, you can pick which one <clears throat> you want for your cover page, distress it, sew um, a few stitches around it. Then you have your little Bible verses. You can do the same thing and just cut all these here. Wherever you want to stitch, stitch it now before we start putting it onto the pages. If you want to distress it, distress it now. Um, again, see like this here, cut it, stitch it before you glue anything else or glue it onto your, to your pages. It's a lot easier to do that type of work 
before you attach it to your pages. Okay, so that is my recommendation, and we'll be doing some of that together. Now, for the inside pages, we have five signature pages, which are these five signature pages. These here, you're going to need five sheets inside each of these signature covers, okay? I'm using printer pages. Now, Hobby Lobby has a paper, their, their brand, it's this Paper Studio, a 12, 12 by 12 paper pack that's very, very thin. It's almost like paper thin. I don't often buy it, um, and I don't have any here, otherwise I would have shown you it. But they do have a really pretty paper line. It's great for like beading and things like that. And that's the only reason I would buy because it's one-sided. But it'd be good for this if you don't want a coffee dye it. Select one that will probably go with the colors, the color themes that we have going on here. And use that for your inside pages if you want. If you're going to do that, you're going to want to cut 25 sheets at six and three quarters by nine and a half. Again, 25 sheets, six and three quarters by nine and a half. If you don't want to do that and you want to follow along with me, that's great, awesome. That's why we're here, right? I cut my printer paper, and this is just regular cheap printer paper I bought from Walmart. I cut 25 at six and three quarters by nine and a half. 25 at six and three quarters by nine and a half. Now the reason I cut it before I bake it and dip it into my coffee it's because it's a lot easier to cut before you coffee dye it and bake it. Once you bake it it starts to shrink and crinkle and it's so hard. I'll show you one. <coughs> It's really hard to cut once you have them like this. Okay. Once it's th this point, you know, if I wanted, I had these here for um, my previous al album that I did. If I wanted to use this for this album, and I can, I can cut it, and I probably will. Um, see, this is, this is one of the things, if you go to the Goodwill and you find these old cookie sheets or the baking racks that has lines and you lay your paper the right way you get really nice lines and it gives you good writing lines so that's a good way but see how crinkled that is it makes it really hard for you to put it in the paper cutter and really get precise cutting so I always suggest that you cut it before you dye it, it just makes life a lot lot easier okay so um, I use instant coffee. Now the reason I use instant coffee is because it is a lot better for coffee dyeing your pages. I don't like using tea. I've tried the tea, don't like it. Um, my husband didn't appreciate it either because I use his tea bags. <laughs> I like coffee. It's the best thing that I've um, that I recommend, and it's a lot more affordable. I think I paid like four bucks for this. I use about a cup and a half to two cups to about four cups of water. I want it really, really strong. Anything that you have extra, put it into a spray bottle. Put about a teaspoon of alcohol to preserve it, and that way you can do your splatters on your pages or your cards later on. You'll need an old iron if you have one, one that you're not going to use for ironing your clothes. But then again, who irons? I mean, I don't iron anymore unless my kids need something. I wear jeans, t-shirts, and sweats. That's it. If I go to church on weekends, well, on Sundays, I normally wash my clothes, hang dry them, so they're always already, they're not wrinkled. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't like wear, I don't like ironing. I used to do that when my kids were little. I ironed even their socks. I kid you not. I was a fanatic about ironing. I ironed their little burping cloth, their socks, everything got ironed. And now that they're older, I'm just like, oh, whatever. I don't want to iron anymore. I think I was ironed out. But we, we will do some splatters, and I'll show you 
the different effects that you can have with splattering and ironing your paper. It gets a really nice cool effect. So we'll be doing that in the videos to come. These are going to be long series of videos, and I hope you guys enjoy it, but it, they are a little bit more personal for you guys. So if you have any questions or something you want me to show you, let me know, and I'll be happy to show you. So this is what I use, Walmart brand, and I use my coffee. When I dip my paper in, I dip it when it's cold, never when it's hot, because the effects are totally different. You get a better color seepage and effect than you would when it's cold, I mean when it's hot. When it's hot, you don't get a really nice good color, but when it's cold, the seepage and the color variations are really cool and I like the effect of cold versus hot. Some people say use it hot. I don't like it. I don't even like doing it with my laces. So entirely up to you. Now as a warning, if you are going to be coffee dyeing your coffee, your paper, keep your oven at least 200. I'm a little impatient. I normally have about four cookie sheets that I buy at the dollar, uh, dollar Tree for a dollar with my papers and then I have some uh, cookie racks where I have you know for the lines and stuff like that so I have all these sheets going in and out of the oven and so it's like a little factory but I'm impatient I put the, the, the oven at 300 I don't suggest you guys do that if you have a little bit more patience then just put it in Keep an eye on it every five, uh, check it. At least within five minutes, you should have your paper baked. But if it's not, just be patient, especially when you're first turning on that oven. It might take a little longer. But within five to ten minutes, your pages are dry. If you don't want to do it that way, you can also sun bake it. It takes longer, and the wind, you have to put some little something down to hold it. I don't like doing it. I didn't think the effects were all that great. Um, but again, that's a personal preference. If you are going to bake it, do not leave your oven unattended. Please, guys, make sure your oven is attended to. Um, have some dish towels. Just know that whatever you're using, you're only going to use it for your paper baking because, let's face it, the coffee is strong and it's going to start to, you know, dye all that stuff. So just make sure you set it aside. Like I have my cookie sheets. Um, oven, oven mint aside so that that's what that's the only things that I use okay so that now go through your um, package and this is when you're gonna go in and select what else you're gonna go in and coffee dye it you go in and pull out your stuff and even your laces pull out anything that you want to coffee dye at this point okay in these in your package you have some doilies and laces that you can potentially coffee dye. Go ahead and dip it into that little mixture that you have. If you are baking in laces, again, what I normally do is I put it in a little bit and then I take those. I do one or two things. I either put a paper towel. If I have a lot, I'll put it in a, um old pillowcase and I throw it in a dryer and let it tumble dry. If I have just a few like these, um, I'll put it in the coffee, squeeze out any excess coffee, put a little um, paper towel down, and then put the laces on top, and then another paper towel, and then I put it in the oven, in the microwave for about a minute, and then just keep checking it, you know, moving things around. And if it's not dry, then I'll put another minute, and just keep going that way. The other way I also do it is I'll take a cookie sheet that I buy from Dollar Tree and I'll lay them down with a paper towel on underneath um, and put my my laces on there and again I'm rotating them and moving them around so that I can get them dried up but again please pay attention to your oven I don't want you guys to set your house on fire I don't want to hear about it okay <laughs> Okay, so at this time, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select, see these little scraps that I cut from the size? These are great um, when you're doing your um, these pages, and I'll show you. You can take these and you can do a nice little patchwork 
um, use a glue stick, glue it down. And I did a video tutorial um, in, was it 2017, of what I did at Patchwork Journal. You can glue these down and then with some um, glue sticks and then run it through your sewing machine and do some crazy stitching and then you get a nice little piece on your paper but first coffee dye it right so that's what these little scraps were going to be wonderful for and we're going to use them exactly for that so we're going to save that for our pages all right so this is your library card some people got little stains on them because these are old and it has an adhesive back. I'm not going to coffee dye it directly with uh, submerging it into coffee because the adhesive back might get ruined and that's usable for our album. Then we got two of these. I'm probably just going to splatter on these and I will probably hmm, coffee dye one. Let's see. I'm going to separate what I'm going to coffee dye and what So this is coffee dye stash this is not going to be coffee dyed. So I'm going to coffee dye one and keep one. So we're going to coffee dye this one and keep one not coffee dyed. This is a 1940s book. It's already distressed as it is. It's kind of brittle, so you have to be really careful. Again, this is one of those pieces that we're probably going to use to do some patchwork on our pages. So we're not coffee dyeing that. Your tags for sure. We can coffee dye this little index card thingy whatever it is we can coffee dye the envelope for sure coffee dye your little um, tab envelope or folder we're gonna coffee dye all these beautiful musical pages we're gonna coffee dye coffee dye and we're gonna have to when you when you're coffee dyeing them just cut in between here with the scissors and individually coffee dye those so we're gonna coffee dye all this Get it all nice. Okay. We will coffee dye the graph paper. Um, you can choose to do this one. We're going to do probably a library card. Um, if you have your round corner punches, you can choose to do that one um, or not. I am going to do it. And your music sheet, we're going to do it. This is already coffee dyed. This is wax paper, and I did a tutorial, so check it out. We won't do that because it's already done, and we won't do this because it's pretty heavy. All right, so this is what we're coffee dyeing, and then I'm going to go through my pile of laces, and I'll check to see which ones I want to put in there and which ones, which ones I don't. I probably will be putting all of them in there, to be honest, and we'll do that in a tutorial. So this is my coffee dye stack and my non-coffee dye stack okay put all my nons over here all right so set your stuff aside and we'll we're going to be back um, probably today is wednesday probably wednesday evening i will have your videos on how to coffee dye all this stuff and that way we can get it all set and done and then we can start putting it all together to create our pages. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.